Amen. I appreciate that good singing this morning. Uh, turning your Bibles to the book of Matthew, the book of Matthew, and we're going to look at chapter 15, Matthew chapter 15. Brother Jason was talking about catching his breath. That's what happens when you get old. It takes time to catch your breath, you know what I mean? And uh, my wife said, why do you keep telling everybody you're 59? It's because I don't want them to think I'm 79, right? <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Amen. Some days I feel like I'm 79, right? Uh, Matthew chapter 15, and uh, we're going to look at, starting verse number 21, and uh, preach this morning a message on the outcome of tireless faith. The outcome of tireless, <coughs> tireless faith. Matthew chapter 15, and uh, we'll begin reading here at verse 21. The Bible says, Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coasts and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Verse 25. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Now the theme of our church this year is walking by faith. Having faith in God and walking each day by faith. We have already in our, our church as individuals and in our country have had our faith tested. Amen. It is a time of testing. I want to, I want to preach uh, this morning on the outcome of tireless faith. Jesus here at this time is now taking his disciples outside of the boundaries of Israel. You know, most of Jesus' ministry <clears throat> was in the boundaries of Israel. Um, you know, he's in Galilee in the north and Judea in the south, and most everything happened in those places. But there were times he went outside of that. Uh, he went up north to Caesarea Philippi. There was a time he passed through Samaria and uh, the Samaritan woman, the woman at the well. And, and uh, Wednesday night I, I uh, spoke about that, but... Um, uh, outside of the boundaries of Israel. Here is another place, the Bible says, Tyre and Sidon. He came to Israel as her king, and they rejected him. And now he goes outside of the boundaries. This story is also given in Matthew, or excuse me, the book of Mark, chapter 7. This same story. Here is an interesting story about faith, and it teaches us a lot about faith. Notice at the end of the story, verse 28, he said to this woman, O woman, great is thy faith. That's an amazing statement that he would make to a woman that was not even a Jew. And yet he said to his own disciples, O ye of little faith. Amen. And to this woman, he says, great is thy faith. Very interesting. As I began to study and think about this, I thought about this fact. How did this woman know of Jesus? The Bible says in the book of Mark that she was a Syrophoenician. That means she was from Syria and Phoenicia. Probably because of her parentage that she was both. Now, in that day, it was very important, the pedigree of people. Now today, everybody's concerned about the pedigree of their pets. <laughs> but back in that day, it was the pedigree of people, you know. 
I mean, the Samaritans were half-breed Jews, and so they were looked down upon. And uh, so, and, you know, they, they wanted full-blooded people, full-blooded Jew or full-blooded whatever they were. Here was a Syrophoenician. <clears throat> How did she know of Jesus? She wasn't in Israel. She wasn't living in Israel. She wasn't a Jew. How did she hear of this? Well, let me say that uh, without, <laughs> without uh, newspapers and without cell phones and without telephones and without telegraph, the news still spread. That's right. Amen? Amen? I mean, you know, the, the word of mouth is the way the news is spread. Somebody said the way you get your news out is telegraph, telephone, and tell a woman. <laughs> oh, that's not a good one. I shouldn't have brought that one up, right? <laughs> but no kidding, telling people news spreads, right? From one person, the next person, next person, next person. The news can spread around fast. And somehow she had heard about this Jesus Christ and what he was doing and what he did. Uh, the, the book of Mark tells us that Jesus went to this area of Tyre and Sidon to hide away, to get away. You know, there were times in, in Jesus' uh, ministry where he needed to get away. He needed to get away a few times with his disciples. When he went up to Caesarea Philippi, it was he and his disciples. They kind of got away from the crowd, got away from everybody. Uh, there were times he went out on a boat to get away from the crowd. You know, I, I mean, his, his popularity was so much they were following all the time. And there are times you just need to get away. Amen? We've had too much getaway time here lately. But anyhow, that is needed. And, and so he goes to this to get away. Maybe he wanted... To, to bring some things to his disciples and teach them and, and, and by himself, you know, or just get away by himself. And there were times like that in the life of Christ and in his ministry. But he could not be hid. Even outside of the nation of Israel, his, his popularity and news about him had grown. Let me ask you this question. Could your faith Match the faith of this woman. I want you to think about it as we go through this story today. Could your faith match the faith of this woman? I want you to notice, first of all, we're going to look at verses 21 and 22. First of all, the request in verses 21 and 22. The Bible says, Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coasts and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Now, the Bible says, they hear in verse 22 that a woman of Canaan. You know, but listen, the, the history of Israel, if you read the history of Israel, there's a lot of history of the Canaanites. Remember that? The Canaanites were always giving them trouble. There was always war and battle uh, among them. And I'm sure that the history was passed on down through that even to the day of Christ that the Israelites did not like the Canaanites. I mean, it was just, that was part of their history. But she was Canaanite. A, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coasts. And she cried unto him. Now notice the presentation of her request here. She first of all, and I love this about this woman, the first thing that she asked for in verse 22, she cried in him saying, here's her first words, have mercy on me. No. Wow. Huh. Wow. How could the Lord turn down that kind of request? Have mercy on me. The first thing that she says, have mercy on me. No doubt she had given up on the Canaanite gods. They hadn't helped her. She was desperate. She would have had a desperate situation in her life. Listen, you only ask for mercy from someone in authority. So by her asking for mercy, she was seeing the authority of Jesus Christ already. She just walks up there and she says, have mercy on me. My friend, this takes humility. You know, it makes me think about 
the time that I got saved and I came to Christ, I remember that feeling in my heart. My dad was saved, my mom was saved, my brother was saved, my sister was saved. But I was the black sheep of the family, you know what I mean? And I knew down in my heart, my whole family was serving the Lord and I, I went along with them, but my heart wasn't into it. I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to participate in all of what, they, what, what was going on. I just wanted to stay at home and pretty soon the Lord started speaking to my heart and I, why, what's wrong with you? Why is your family all serving the Lord and you don't want to go and you want to stay at home? And I started to realize there's something wrong in my heart. There's something deeply wrong in my heart. And I started to realize that I needed the mercy of God. Amen. Why don't we hear people crying out for mercy from God today? Sure. What's wrong with people? I tell you what, because it takes humility to get to that point. Imagine as she cries out here, imagine the pleading in her voice. Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievous, uh, grievously vexed with a devil. Can you hear the tone of her voice and the cry in her voice and, and, and maybe tears coming down her face as she cried out to him? No. Have mercy on me. Oh, God, help us to see people coming to church and hear the preaching of the gospel and come to the altar and kneel down with tears in their eyes, crying, God, have mercy on me. Have mercy. Amen. Notice what else she says. She, first of all, says, have mercy on me. Look what she says next. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Now, listen. Back in that day, to call somebody Lord meant a lot more than what we hear today. No. We hear people saying, Lord, have mercy. Eh, they don't mean that. <laughs> this woman meant it. Amen. We, hear, we hear Lord used as a byword and a curse word and all, of, all kind of other things. But Lord was a, was a uh, title that meant master or supreme in authority. And she recognized his authority and she said, have mercy on me, O Lord. She acknowledged him as God. Not the pagan deities that she was brought up with, but she saw who Jesus was and she recognized who Jesus is. And isn't it an amazing thing that this person outside of Israel that was a, 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 a mixed race could recognize who Jesus was and not even a lot of the Jews could recognize who he was. He came unto his own and his own received him not. Sorry. They didn't receive him. But here, this woman, she sees who Jesus is. You know, friends, listen, when we stand before God on judgment day, you know what's going to matter is what we have done with Jesus Christ. No. That's what's going to matter. Doesn't matter what religion or denomination or church, that, that's not going to matter when it comes to heaven or hell. It's what did you do with Jesus? Amen. That's the question. That's right. Boy, it's divided a lot of people and religions and wars and things, all kind of crazy things going on because of who Jesus is. She said, she cried unto him and called him Lord. Now notice this, what she says next. I mean, if you, if you have any doubt about who she thinks this, this man is, she says, thou son of David. Just to make sure. <laughs> you know what? David, who is David? He was a king in Israel. He fought against the Canaanites. <laughs> you know what I mean? The son of David had no relevance to her. But she knew it had a lot of relevance to Christ and everybody else standing around her. Everybody else. You know, I, I just love her desperate situation. She didn't care who hurt her. She didn't care who was around there. She had something that she needed and she was desperate for an answer to her prayer. No. Jesus Thou son of David. And now comes the actual request. My daughter is grievous, grievously vexed with the devil. Now, notice this. 
She comes asking a request for her daughter. But notice, before that, she said, have mercy on who? It, she didn't say my daughter. She said, have mercy on me. You know what that tells me? It gives us an important lesson. Everyone needs mercy. Amen. Amen. Everyone needs mercy. The daughter is the one who needed the help. But she cries, have mercy on me. I don't know what happened with her daughter. I don't know how old this woman was and how old her daughter was. I would imagine she wasn't a little child. I would imagine she's partially grown if she was grievously vexed with the devil. But this woman comes recognizing because of crying mercy, she recognized her sinful own sinful condition. And that her daughter was a sinner as well. She recognized that. Let me tell you something. Sin affects those around us. I've heard people say to me, well, you know, I, my, my sin is just my own, just affects, no it doesn't. It affects those around you. The sin of the father will affect the sin of the whole family. The sin of a mother will affect the, the, the whole family. The sin of children affects the whole family. And listen, the sin of church members affects our whole church. No. It does. It affects others. It really does. And this woman, this mother was affected by what happened to her daughter. A devil came. I mean, uh, how can, a, how can a devil possess somebody unless they give themselves over to that? And here it is, this problem that was happening. My daughter is grievously vexed with, with a devil, the Bible says. They needed mercy and we all need it. Turn over to Titus, the book of Titus chapter 3 and look at verse number 5. We'll come back to the book of Matthew in just a second. But look at Titus chapter 3 and verse number 5 where the Bible says this. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Notice there, we all need mercy. <clears throat> That's how anybody gets saved. The Bible says it's not works of righteousness which we have done. We cannot save ourselves. You cannot work your way to heaven, the Bible says. But uh, according to his mercy, he saved us. I'm so glad of the day when the Lord Jesus had mercy on this sinful soul. Amen. Aren't you glad of that? Wow. I remember the day when the Lord saved me. I didn't deserve it, but thank God he had mercy upon this rotten sinner and all of us rotten sinners. Wow. Thank God for that day. Amen. Yes. Praise God for that. Don't forget that. He showed mercy. And this is what this woman does back here in Matthew chapter 15. She cries out to the Lord for mercy and understanding we all need that. I want you to notice secondly this morning the response. We looked at the request. Now look at the response in verses 23 and 24. The Bible says this. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him saying, send her away for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I want you to notice, first of all, the response is there was no response. The Bible says in verse 23, but he answered her not a word. Now, this uh, was not the usual response of Christ. When somebody came asking like that, I mean, you read the rest of the accounts of of Jesus and his healing and his dealing with people. And, <clears throat> I mean, he never just ignored somebody. But in this case, he did. Why is that? Well, let me say first of all this. Listen to me. Jesus deals with each one of us as individuals. Amen? Amen. He never responded to somebody just the same. I learned a lesson, you know, many years ago when I was a teenager and then I got to Bible college, I learned the way to lead someone to Christ. The Romans wrote, da da da, da da da, here's what you do, ba 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 ba, pray the prayer, here's saying. And listen, I know it works, it does work, 
But I had somebody teach me one time, take each individual just like they are. Amen. Sometimes, now, I learned the lesson that sometimes when I lead someone to Christ, I share my testimony with them. But sometimes I will get right to the book of Romans. Sometimes I'll go to John 3, 16. Sometimes I'll go up, do other things, other places. You know, you want the Holy Spirit to lead. You know what happened when I learned those, those, that system, bang, bang, bang. It's like, Holy Spirit, step aside. I got this. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, you need the Holy Spirit to guide you. Amen? Yeah. Talk to people just as they are, where they are. And so here he is. He doesn't even respond. There's no doubt about it. When you read the rest of the story, there's no doubt about it. He was testing her faith. Do you know that <clears throat> when you pray for something, sometimes God doesn't answer yes or no, but sometimes God says, wait. Amen. I would rather a yes or a no. Amen. <laughs> Wouldn't you? But sometimes God just says, wait. Jesus was just testing her faith. How much faith does this woman really have? He may have been waiting to see how the disciples would react to this. And the disciples did react. He was God. Jesus was God. He knew the disciples were going to react. And so he just, he just waited. Verse 23 says, His disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. Isn't that, isn't that a response for, from people who, you know, they're not thinking about the spiritual. They're not thinking about the needs of this woman. They're just thinking about, we got a way to get away with Christ from the crowds and get rid of this woman. She's bothering us. Let me tell you something. Every request from every person is not a bother to God. Amen. No. Sure. It's not bothering God. But Jesus, I believe, wanted the disciples to respond. Their hearts were still hardened by their prejudices. And Jesus wanted them to get over that. You know, if, you, if you're saved and you're a mature Christian, you've got to get over that. Sure. Amen? You know who needs the gospel? Everyone needs the gospel. Amen. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Amen? Amen? Everybody needs to know. Sometimes God wants to see how you're going to respond. Now, Jesus responds. First of all, he didn't respond. The disciples, they respond. Now Jesus responds again. Verse 24. He's bringing this test. Boy, what a test. He answered and said, I am not sent unto the lost sheep of the house. I, I wait, wait, let me read it right. I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I just came here for the Jews, in other words. And uh, she being of <clears throat> mixed, mixed uh, uh, breed and mixed background. What is she going to say? Again, he was testing her faith. Listen, friend, that's the way our, our, our faith is strengthened. No. It's when God tests our faith. Don't get mad at God. Listen to me. Don't get mad at God when he tests your faith. He wants it to strengthen. I think some of you understand. You know that. Amen. How much do you really trust the Lord? It's pretty easy to get up and sing a song or talk about, I'm through the hard times, I'm just going to trust the Lord. The God of the mountain is still God in the valley, I know that. But listen, when you get in the valley, are you still going to sing that? Amen. Are you still going to have faith in God when the test comes? She was sure being tested here. I want you to notice thirdly here is the reply. The reply. Look at verses 25, 26, and 27. The Bible says here, Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. 
Here is a conversation back and forth, which is, I mean, gold. I just think it's just gold. You know what I'm saying? Notice her actions. First thing she did, when he first, he wouldn't answer, and the disciples say this, and then he gives this answer in verse 24, I'm not uh, sent, but to the law, sheep of the house of Israel. Look what she did. Verse 25, I love this. She fell down on her knees and worshipped him. She didn't say a thing. She just started worshipping the Lord. Wow. Can you imagine standing around with that group of people? Even if there wasn't a big group, I imagine the group was gathering. As this goes on, and she falls down and worships him, saying, Lord, help me. Amen. Help me. I don't care about anything else. I just need your help. <laughs> I mean, did you feel that way when you got saved? Boy, I did. I was like, look, look I, I, I don't care about anything else. I need to be born again. I need to be saved. I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. God, help me. I need help. I would imagine at this point, there was passion in her voice and tears on her face. She bows before him in the presence of all these disciples. She worships him. She knew something that even the Pharisees in Jerusalem did not know. Why didn't they fall down and worship him? No. She worships him because Jesus is God. If he was not God, he would have refused her worship. We find in Scripture, different uh, Peter, when somebody bowed down to him and said, Get up, don't bow to me, I'm not God. But let me tell you something, Jesus is God. And she fell down on her knees and worshipped him. She said, Lord, help me. I can't put it into, into beautiful words, I just need help. And again, it's unreal, but Jesus still, he answers her and he said, in verse 26, it is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Wow. Jesus, I kind of think that probably Jesus was saying here what the disciples were thinking. And Jesus, I believe, was teaching them a lesson they would never forget. Amen. He said, why should I cast the bread to dogs? You know why? Because the Jews looked at these people as dogs. And I think he was saying to using her as an example to teach his disciples that, you know, you think of this, these people as dogs, but let me tell you something. I think he was telling them God came, God loves every person, and Jesus came to save every person. Amen. Don't you look down on them and call them dogs? And yet, wow, amazing picture here. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. He taught them that lesson. Be careful who you talk to. Be careful who you spread the gospel to. I remember a situation that uh, reminds me of this. And we were in the Philippines, and I had another young preacher uh, from, from the U.S. with me, and, and then some uh, Filipino soul winners from the church. And we were at a place, and there were a bunch of boys playing basketball, and, and uh, the, the uh, Filipino uh, preacher there, he looked at me and he said, do you want to preach to these guys? I said, sure. I mean, anywhere, everywhere, right? I'll give them the gospel. He goes over there and he grabs the basketball. He says, all right, you guys, come over here and sit down. This, this uh, preacher is going to preach to you. Boy, you interrupt the basketball game here, you're going to have some trouble. But man, he, he didn't care, man. He grabbed that. Go there, sit down. And so I don't know. There's about 20 guys that sat down there, and I just gave the gospel. I said, bow your heads and close your eyes. How many of you would like to trust Christ as your Savior? And more than half of them raised their hand. Amen. And there was a, a bunch of uh, uh, Filipinos from the church there that went over and got got the boys and pulled them out started leading them to Christ. It was, it was tremendous. 
I don't know how many, 15, 16 boys got saved, and they're leading them to Christ, and boy, we are, we are rejoicing. This is great, you know, and uh, just here out on the street, and those boys, you know what? They didn't even care about basketball then. They were getting saved. It was an amazing thing. And uh, right in the midst of all of this, as those boys were getting led to Christ, as we're standing on the basketball court, here comes a guy. And he was kind of a tall, unusual-looking Filipino man. Filipinos aren't very tall, big people, but this guy was over six foot, had big, long arms, and he came walking up there, and he kind of stood out, and he's like, I know what you guys are doing. You're preaching this gospel of Christ. And he started and he's acting goofy, and he's like, and the uh, the young preacher that was with me from America, you know, he's kind of like, well, uh, listen, uh, you know, uh, you know, and he's kind of bristling. A little. I just grabbed him. I said, let's go. And we started to walk away, and that guy started following us. Oh, oh, he's talking loud. Oh, 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 you know, all this stuff. I'm just like, let's get out of here. You know, I, I really believe the Lord, the Lord really just spoke to my heart. This guy is trying to make you look stupid. And I felt like the devil sent him up there to try to make us look foolish. You know, I did. I just turned and walked away. You know, it's like this verse says, give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine. You know, those young men there were ready to receive the gospel and they got saved, but this guy was trying to mess it all up. I'm not going to waste my time with him. I'm not. I'm not going to cast the, swirl, the, the pearls before swine. I just walked away, and I, as, I, as we walked away, he followed us, but it pulled him away from disturbing those other boys that were getting saved. Amen? Amen. You can't let the devil mess it up, right? That's right. The way he wants to. How many times I've seen that? I've seen my dad up preaching the, preaching the gospel, and the conviction in the auditorium is, a, is an auditorium bigger than this. He was up there preaching one time, preaching the gospel, and you can feel the conviction in that thing. And back over here on this side, a door went slam. <laughs> it stopped everybody. Kaboom, you know. Everybody stopped for a second. So dad just went on preaching. Started preaching again over on this side. Kaboom! The preacher said afterwards, he said, <clears throat> he said, I know, Pastor, after, as the preacher gets up to preach, all those doors are closed. Now he said, there was conviction there, and the devil was trying to get everybody's attention off of what you were preaching. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about it. That we've never had, he said, I've pastored here for years, and we've never had a door slammed like that. You know, the devil just wants to mess things up. Right. Amen? Amen. And no doubt, he, I mean, they, they may have been thinking about that at this point, but here's a woman that really is honestly wanting to know and wanting help. Notice the woman's reply. He said, it is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Notice her answer. Boy, this is powerful. <coughs> She didn't fight with him. She didn't argue with him. She said, truth, Lord. She kept calling him Lord, right? Truth. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. <laughs> Whew, what an answer. Her faith did not grow tired. That's why I call this message the outcome of tireless faith. I mean, how many of us would have had faith like she had? She wasn't leaving until she got the answer to her prayer. Can I tell you something, Christian? There's many times we give up too early. You know what I'm saying? We give up too early. She just consistently kept begging God and asking God to answer. She didn't swell with pride and call him a racist and said, you're prejudiced. I don't care about the prejudice. I don't care about those things. I need help. My daughter is vexed with the devil. She humbly agreed with him and called him Lord. She recognized his almighty power and knew he could easily heal her daughter. I came for something and I, wanted, I don't care what you say. I don't care. 
about those things. I need help. You know, wow, what an example to us. Amen. What a story here in the scripture. One of the most outstanding stories of the Bible. Let me finish with the result. The last point is the result in verse number 28. What's the result of all of this? Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Hey, her faith outlasted, right? Her faith stood the test and the trial. She was uh, commended for her faith. I don't know of anybody else in the, in the life of Christ where Jesus looked at them and said, Great is thy faith. Amen. But this woman, her child is healed. Her request is granted. And she went away from Christ with an answer to prayer. Let me ask you today, what re request do you have today? What are you praying for today? Is God trying your faith? Is your faith growing weary? Look at this woman of tireless faith. Let me encourage you today. Don't give up today. Don't give up. If you're here today without Christ as your Savior, listen, this same Lord Jesus, He loves everyone and gives the gospel to every person. And He wants everyone to get saved. Come to Him by faith and trust Him. Be encouraged, Christian, in this story. Continue on. Go on for God. Keep being a person of faith. And may your faith grow. And be a person of great faith.